Hello everyone, welcome back to Chill Deal Trades, where I analyze the market so that you know what's going on. Today I believe I'm making one of my most important videos so far on the channel. We'll be analyzing the markets and where we think it's heading over the next month and why maybe a correction could be looming. Um, so if you haven't subbed yet, please hit the sub button and join the squad. We are growing, which is awesome because the more people that sub, comment, and like on the videos, the more people will see them and we'll all be more informed. That's what's we'll be more we'll all be more informed on what's happening in the market. But let's go ahead and jump in the content. Uh, so when I'm analyzing the overall markets, one of the first things I like to look at is the put call ratio. So kind of to quickly understand what it is, when we see the put call ratio high, that means people are more bearish. But when we see a really low ratio, that means people are more bullish. And the reason is is calls on the bottom of the of the ratio, and so the higher the calls, which is long, the lower the ratio will be. And so something really interesting that we've been seeing, um, we've seen kind of some divergence depending on where you're looking at for these ratios. But for the overall market, um, the equity market, we've been seeing that we've crept up this last week, which is really interesting. So even though we've been hitting all time, well, it kind of makes sense. We've been hitting all time highs, but people have been getting bearish. Um, why that's important is we typically see that when a ratio is high, the market typically is heading higher. But when the ratio is low, that means the market will typically head lower because people are almost always too late when they start making decisions. When someone's really bearish, it mostly means that we're probably near a time for the market to move higher. When people are really bullish, that typically means that the market is going to soon start heading the opposite direction. And so seeing this ratio higher tells us that people think we're bearish even though we're at all time high, so that could continue to push the market a little bit higher over the next couple weeks. And this is something I've been seeing is um, typically you would want this ratio much lower when we're hitting all time highs. And because it's not, that could add a little bit more steam to the market because people are opening up shorts, which means they're going to have to cover, which only keeps pushing the market higher and higher and higher because people keep covering, covering, covering. And so I think this is one of the factors that we could see a few more weeks of upside before this ratio maybe starts heading back down again. Um, in contrast, which is really interesting, we're seeing the XP, uh, SPX, which is basically the S&P 500, we're seeing this ratio go lower. And so what that means is people are getting more bullish on it. So even though people overall um, are, are more bearish, people on the XPY are more bullish. And I think this makes sense because we'll cover it in a second, but um, the QQQ, so tech has been outperforming everything in the market. And even though the SPY was going up, it wasn't going up as drastically. And so I think a lot of money is starting to rotate into these more SPY names. Um, and so that's really important um, to know for the next few weeks that we mar might be seeing more and more money rotate into those names as there's more bullishness there in the short term. Um, but these are things that I would I would really suggest everybody to keep an eye on. Keep an eye on these put call ratios because this is really going to tell you when people are way too bearish, that means the stock will probably go higher in, in the short term or over the extended time. And when this ratio is high, which is bearish, um, we're probably going to be heading higher. Did I just say that twice? When we're lower, uh, that means that the stock market is probably going to go lower. That's a weird... Um, a weird uh, sentence, but just remember that. The next thing I like to look at is it's called the AAII bearish sentiment. And so kind of what it tells is it, it gets a survey of where people think the market will be heading in the next six months. And this is something I always look at from week to week. And so last week, this, this is surveyed every Wednesday. And so last week we saw that we saw a pretty big jump in bullishness in the market. So similar to the XPY put call ratio, we're also seeing here that people are really a lot more bullish, which is really interesting because we saw the opposite when we were looking at the put call ratio. So something interesting is happening. But the reason I like this sentiment a lot is because it breaks down bullish, neutral, and bearish. And so something I always try to look at is, I mean, look at the last year. Over the average, a bullish high is 56% on average. So we've been down a little bit lower here recently. And so if we continue to see this creep up, this is going to be knowing that we're slowly getting to maybe more of a peak in the market and a correction could be coming. When we see people from neutral starting to shift to either bearish or bullish, that uh, that typically is going to put a little bit more volatility in the market because people are actively trading one direction compared to just maybe just holding on or not buying in the market when they're neutral. 
And so we could see a much more volatility either to the upside or the downside in the coming weeks, especially if we see this bullishness start to increase more and more. Um, and I just wanted to take a, a look at kind of a few more weeks to figure out. So back in um, March, I think it was March, right? Or May, sorry. Back in May when we saw that pullback in the market, look at where the bullishness was prior to that pullback. At the end of April, we saw 56 to 50%. And so this is what I'm going to be looking over the next two weeks is if we get back into this 50-ish range on the bullish sentiment, then I think that's going to be kind of foretelling that a correction is coming in the market. And we'll get into the charts and break that down even more in just a second. And then lastly, this is just the spread between bulls and bears. And so we are seeing this ratio creep up more, which is also telling us more bullishness in the market. More and more people are probably um, just with obviously markets breaking all time highs. People are like, oh, the market's doing great. I'm going to go long. I'm going to start buying more positions. Things like that are happening. And so these are all um, these two, both the put call ratio and the AAII bear sentiment um, charts are the things that I would I would really suggest everybody look at on a on a weekly basis because it's going to give you a really a lot of insight in where the market could be headed. Um, and so now let's get into the charts. So the first couple charts I want to look at, the first one are kind of ratios on the market. So this first one is that IWM versus QQQ. So I made a video on my channel on Friday where I broke down this as well as some of the small to mid cap tech names that have been underperforming. So go watch that video as well. Um, but this is why the reason I'm bringing this up is because we're at a, a big decision point for this ratio. And so obviously we've been seeing big tech outperform small tech like wilds amount right now facebook google have all been breaking out to all-time highs and that's really what's been pushing up the nasdaq and so what we're seeing here is we're really at a decision point because we're coming into really significant resist or support we kind of have somewhat of like a descending triangle i guess you could call it that but if you kind of look in this range this is really important because we've tested it multiple times and so if we see this break down next time that means we're going to continue to see underperformance in the Russell 2000 compared to the NASDAQ. But if we start seeing this break out again, those names that you love like PLTR, um, SoFi, NNDM, all those really popular kind of Russell 2000 ish type names, those are going to start um, performing better because they have pulled back the last couple weeks. And so this is some this ratio is something really important to understand where money is moving in the market. If we start to see this outperform that means people are probably shifting some of their money from nasdaq because it's performing so so amazingly to the um russell 2000 or to spy so those this is a ratio that you really want to keep pay attention to and we're at a really important part coming up in the next couple weeks the next one we want to look at is the qqq divided by spy and so this is another ratio and very similarly i mentioned it earlier but we've seen the nasdaq significantly outperform s p 500 as of recent but as you kind of zoom in, the last couple of weeks we have seen the SPY start to perform significantly. Um, and I called this out a couple weeks uh, weeks ago on my live stream. I leave, live stream every Friday on Stock Talk Game um, at Twitch. The description, the links in the description. So come hang out every Sunday night at 7 p.m. We talk about these things live, and we called out that that tech was going to start outperforming the market because we saw this breakout back here a couple weeks ago. Um, so we're going to have to see what decision is here. We're coming up on very important resistance for this scenario, for this chart, you know, kind of in this range. And so maybe we'll see, you know, we could potentially see the tech perform, but it's going to hit this resistance and make a decision. And if it fails and comes back down or maybe even consolidates, we're going to continue to see SPY outperform the NASDAQ for the next couple of weeks. After, okay, now that we've covered that, I want to get into actually the S&P 500 NASDAQ to figure out what the timing of this correction could be if there is one and so there's a lot of lines don't feel overwhelmed I did the I did this just so we can figure out some potential price targets for the top of the market even though you can never time the market something that I try to do um, based on my own expectations and so what I basically want to bring up in this chart is every time the RSI reading I talk about in every video video but every time we see RSI not every time, but a lot of times we see RSI hit oversold. This is SPY. We do see a, a correction in the market. So here we saw 11% correction. That was the biggest one back in September before the crazy run. 
here we, we've only seen one other um, RSI oversold on the daily and that was here and that's when we saw a three and a th three and a half percent correction and look where we're approaching right now we're approaching the overbought territory and so when I say we saw the sentiment get bearish or sorry bullish on the SPY I think it's because this is underperformed QQQ and we can could continue to see this start outperforming over the next two or three weeks um, because it hasn't run as hard as QQQ yet and so this is something that we want to keep an eye on as we start to get into the over um, bought territory on RSI uh, there's a couple levels we want to keep an eye on so this is going to be extremely overwhelming to look at but um, I just accidentally stopped my video, but it's it's back up. Um, but it's really important because we're coming up. I would say I kind of put three lines based on where maybe we could see a, a, a rejection of a high is the first week of July, the second week ish and the, th and the last week. And so to try to figure out with our trend lines, all the crazy trend lines where price points the market could hit. So assuming we, we hold our upward trend lines here. I would say the first price target next week is going to be around 436. I do think there's a high probability that we break above that because there is so much bullet sentiment around SPY right now. Um, but assuming we hit the high next week, I'm just looking at around the 436. If we can continue to hold these trend lines, I would say the next range to the middle of July is somewhere between the 444 and... 433 range that's going to be if we come into the middle of July that's an area I want to look at and if we continue to perform through all of July we kind of go something like this my last price target and I would be a high is 449 range um, so those are the three areas you're going to want to look at and I've kind of mentioned this in past videos but you have to start considering putting hedges in your portfolio obviously we don't know what this correction could be I'm saying somewhere between six and ten percent and I'll get to that in a reason why I think that when we look at the S or the QQQ chart. But these are price targets you want to look at because maybe it's you're going to start building a hedge in your portfolio by buying a put on the market and adding to it. So say we break higher after the ninth and we're heading into the middle of the month and we're getting to this 444 range. Maybe you want to buy your first short on the market, you know, and if we break higher, double down on that position into the end of the month. But these are price targets we're going to keep an eye on. The last chart I want to look at is the QQQ. And so very similarly, you know, this is a QQQ has been a little bit more dramatic as in terms of a lot more volatility. But when we look at RSI, we've had one, two, three, four, five times that it hit overbought since COVID happened. And so I kind of priced out. Um, and so where we're at right now in RSI, we're way overbought. We're at 75. And last time we had a reading of 75, as the max we had a six percent correction and that's why I'm mapping out a six percent correction as the lowest point because of how over oversold the RSI reading is um, I think there's a correlation that we're seeing more on the QQQ with the overbought on RSI and the performance of the correction um, if we continue to see RSI go higher over the next couple weeks and get closer to that 80 range last time we got to 80 we had a 14 percent correction in the market and so when I say 6 to 10 and past video I said 6 to 14 percent, this is the reason I said these numbers is based on the RSI and the correction I saw in the past. So when we go forward, we're going to want to look up, look around where the price targets might be, um, assuming RSI keeps going higher. So when we look into this, I would say next week, we're going to want to look somewhere in the, the 6 or the third 363 range for the first price target of maybe a high in the market. If we continue to break higher, we'll be looking at 366, 372, and last would be 378. So those are the three price points you want to look at for maybe a peak in the market as we see a correction sometime in July. Um, but that's a long video, a lot of content. I would, if you made it this far, I would say watch it again because there's a lot of important information in this video and it's going to help you lever or hedge your portfolio so that you can make money if we do see somewhere between a six and 15 percent correction uh but that's all i have for you i really appreciate you watching the video if you made it this far and i make videos every day so i'll see you again tomorrow